Hey guys, Drew Canoli, remember we're in this together. I wanted to shoot this video for you today because on uh, Instagram I get a lot of questions from people asking how do I strengthen my intuition? How do I know that I'm on the right path? How do I feel my intuition more? How do I tap into those subtle senses that are outside the five senses that we just so commonly resort to? So in this video, I'm gonna do my best to explain this. And listen, you know this, I'm not an expert. I'm a student, I'm not a teacher, I'm a student just like you. I'm reading voraciously, I'm getting in stillness, even more important, I'm, I'm being. You know, I'm tapping into that inner essence. I'm listening to my soul. So a lot of this is new for me. A lot of this is my understanding unfolding always. And I just wanted to share it with you because I believe intuition is one of those muscles that if we nourish it, if we dig in, if we develop it enough, it's one of the most powerful super powers any human being can possess. So what is it? What is intuition? Maybe you've heard it. The gut feeling, you know, I heard, I felt it in my gut. And the reason people say that is because scientifically we have all these neurotransmitters, serotonin, dopamine, other neurotransmitters uh, that just go to our brain from our gut. The gut brain access, the HPA access, 90% of your serotonin, that happy hormone comes from your gut. What I recommend is taking better care of that inward space. The sacral, the root, those different energy meridians that we have, being kind to them. Putting your hand on your gut. What do you need me to know today, gut? Right, checking in with it often. How's my gut feel about this? Instead of saying yes to a question that somebody has for you or a commitment in the future of something that you must do, tap into your gut first. What do you want me to know about this? I'm gonna need a little bit to meditate on this and then get back to the person. Don't just say it and ghost them, because I know there's a lot of ghosters out there. Nobody like nobody likes those ghosters. I'm afraid of no ghosts. And allow those microbiota, that whole entire network, that little army of divinely intelligent beings, some of the greatest technology on the planet, send you the messages that you need to hear at this time. So intuition, gut connection, get it. Two, intuition for me generally comes in flashes flashes in, in my mind, visions that I have. You know, there's clairsentient, there's clairvoyant, there's uh, claircognizance, there's different senses that we have that we have to tap into as human beings outside of the five. And when we start to really understand what works for us, it's like a whole nother level. So for me, I'm very visual. It happens in flashes. I'll get a feeling, I'm very feeling oriented, and then I'll get a flash. So I know, likened to those books that you've probably seen where they go really slow, but it's like a thousand pictures and it turns into a cartoon, like they used to make cartoons with those books. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But how do we slow the flashes down enough so that we can insert into the matrix or into the mind uh, what it is, the vision that we need to see? It takes stopping your mind more. Uh, Wu Qi is a stance in Tai Chi and that is the void. It's nothingness. You clear your mind and you're just in the present moment. My Don talks about this all the time. It's being in the present moment. It's being in the now. Because the present moment is still in linear time thinking. Linear time thinking doesn't exist when we are in now. Or as Itzhak Bentoff would call it, space time. And that is, you can be everywhere at once, omnipresent. And uh, that exists in your multi-dimensional meat suit. When you get rid of that uh, perception of linear time speaking, those flashes really start to slow down a lot. In fact, the, sl the flash, what used to be one little feeling that you'd get that would register it in your intuition, now turns into a whole movie, an IMAX movie, versus the one little cartoon thing. And that, my friend, can lead you down a whole entire pathway to all types of different uh, senses that you can tap into too. And then, uh, when it comes to intuition, I would say always in this, because you know I'm the health guy too, is the physiology, it's the makeup, it's the biochemistry, it's the biology. So when we're heavy in our thoughts, when we're thinking too much, we become heavy in our body. And when we're heavy in our body, we can't really intuit things. We're not getting clear messages. So we have to become light. And sitting in a space of non-doing every day is an important practice as well. And then also, one thing about intuition, I would say, for me, it's to not question it and just know that you already have it. I think that's the big thing. 
Because when we know we already have something, when we know that thing is already designed, perfect, whole, and complete, then we start to get access to it. But if we're too far away from it, if we're detached from it, if it's something that I just don't have, I've never really been intuitive, and you tell yourself these stories or this false narrative, then you'll never tap into it and turn it on. Also, for me, music helps put me in an emotional space, and my intuition is far more powerful when it's in the heart than it is in the mind. So getting in the heart every day. And getting in the heart, for me, looks like 432 hertz music, you know, dolphins, whales. It's emotional, it's essence. It's the essence of who we are. And when we tap into this kind of music and we think about our loved ones or we think about the situation in business that we need help with intuitively, those flashes will happen more often that I talked about. Those gut feelings will happen more often. But this is just real base level intuition stuff, you guys. Start to nourish it, start to cherish it, start to tap into it. Uh, flexibility is crucial when it comes to intuition. So if you're rigid in your practice every single day, if you're rigid in your life, then the rigidity is gonna come to you in the form of not being as flexible with your thought, as intuitive with your thinking. So, intuition's massive. Last thing I wanted to leave you with in this video, and I know I've kind of jumped all over the place, is uh, when it comes to intuition, often it's that first response. Thomas Troward talks about this in his works, his books, written in the 1900s. But that first flash of insight, that first thought, is generally the right one. What we do with our objective minds is we question the subjective. And we question the unconscious, subconscious information that we're getting. And that's likened to throwing little rocks at this pool, and then it ripples. We're trying to see a clear image, but because our monkey minds are, are dabbling and dancing so much and creating all these possibilities and timelines, we're throwing rocks in it so the vision becomes muddy. Your intuition becomes clouded. So oftentimes the first gut feeling that you get when you practice with ESP, ESP cards or whatever else, uh, it's the first thought that you have that is always the right one, unquestionable. So it's not coming from thinking. It's coming from the void, it's coming from source, it's coming from all the information that's around us, in our fields, always, all the time. And we just gotta be still enough to listen to it. So, hopefully this was helpful. I know the topic is a little different, but people ask me this, and I just figured I'd give a, give a crack at it today and let you guys know how I manage intuition in my own life. And uh, it's super potent, super powerful, my friend. It's a great muscle to exercise. It's something that we become disconnected from in Western society. People, a lot of people have. So they date the wrong people, they work the wrong jobs. They're just completely cut off from their soul. And your soul has all the answers, it already knows. You just gotta open up that sacred heart. And um, that's where true power comes from. So like I said, I'm a student with this. I don't know anything, but what I do know um, is that I love and I'm fueled by you. I'm uh, connected to you at this time on this video. The world needs more of us to share these kinds of messages and for that I'm certain. So much love come to you brothers and sisters. Drew Canoli, remember we're in this together. And I will see you soon. Say bye to Jonah. Don't say goodbye. He's busy hunting lizards.